everybody, it's Chris E's known online as Wu Teeny here with another Gay Gamer video podcast. Um, I, I bought this Sega Genesis shirt because I thought it looked really cool, and then after I got it, I realized that at the bottom, where it says, Game Over, it's a bit rude. <laughs> um, anyway, I want to start with a couple of movie reviews. Um, first up, uh, I saw Turning Red. Uh, the new Pixar movie, which was released on Disney Plus, and Disney really screwed this one because I feel like this one should have gotten a theatrical release, uh, like Encanto, because it was much better than Encanto. <laughs> I liked it so much better. Um, here, like neither movie is like made for me. Like I'm not the target audience. Um, like I'm not a pubescent teenage girl. Um, but I just found. Turning Red was just more entertaining because uh, the characters were well defined, the story made sense, I understood the stakes, everything was really just well done. It was very funny and charming. Um, whereas with Encanto, as you might recall in the previous episode where I discussed seeing it, um, it was a mess. I felt like it was an overstuffed mess. I couldn't attach to any of the characters. The plot was not told very well, and a lot of stuff was explained in song with, like, you know, the rapid-fire lyrics that I couldn't follow, um, so I missed a lot of it. Um, someone suggested re-watching it with captions turned on, and I was like, well, that might actually help, but I don't know if I really want to. Uh, whereas with Turning Red, like I said, it was just charming, and I understood the stakes and the characters and the relationships, and there is music, but it's just the, uh, boy band that May is obsessed with, with her friends, and um, those are actually super catchy songs, and I enjoy listening to them on Spotify. But, uh, see it. If you have Disney+, Plus, check it out. It's a really good movie, um, and it should have been in the theaters. Uh, the other movie that I saw this past week is um, The Batman. Um, I'm not the biggest Batman fan, but... Uh, even I have to admit, this was really good. It was really long, but it was really good. Like, it totally could have stood to lose, like, a good 20, 30 minutes. It was just, it was a lot. Um, like, I never felt bored, but there were times when I felt the length, you know? Because it has a beautiful visual style. It looks amazing, but there's times when he's, like, holding these lovely shots, and you're like, that's a beautiful shot, and okay, I, I, I've seen it, okay, move on, okay, you know, it's sort of like Zack Snyder in a slow motion that make, adds an extra half hour to his pictures, um, but the Batman was good, I enjoyed it, um, nothing else to say, if you like Batman, it's, it's a really great, I, I think it's a great Batman movie because for the first time, I feel like we get to see the Dark Knight detective doing some detecting. He's actually, like, finding clues and solving riddles and figuring things out, and that's a nice change of pace for a Batman movie. Um, this is miles better than the Christopher Nolan movies, um, well, the ones I've seen. I didn't like the first one, I thought it was boring. And then I finally got around to seeing the second one because everybody's raving about it, and I saw it on, like, HBO or something, and it was, I did not like that one. So I never saw the third one. But this was legit good. Um, it's too long, but it's good. So, which is better than being too long and bad. I would have liked it more if it was a little shorter. Um, as for games, I want to talk about The Quarry, which is the new announcement from Supermassive Games uh, this past week. And it's another one of their, you know, interactive horror movies starring a slew of famous faces. Um, not super well animated, but, you know, you, they're recognizable faces. Um, I'm intrigued, but I feel like I'm not going to get it when it first comes out. I want it to go on sale, because I, 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 I actually looked up, I liked Until Dawn, but I checked, and I actually bought Until Dawn, like, almost a year after it came out, when it was cheaper. Um... And I think I'll end up doing the same thing here, because you release this and it's like 50 bucks, 50 $60, and I'm just like, 
that's a lot for an interactive movie, and I know that they're, because they're short, and I know that's on purpose, because you're meant to replay them, and make different choices, and see if you can save everybody, or see if you can kill everybody, um, but I don't, I don't think I ever replayed Until Dawn, I just did it the one time, and I was like, I'm good. Um, I never went back. I kind of wanted to get my husband to play it, because he loves horror movies, and I think he would really love it, and I told him about it, and he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But he's not a big video game person, but when he started playing Friday the 13th with his friend last year, I was like, hey, you should check out Until Dawn, I have it, it's right here, and it's an interactive horror movie, and you would love it. And he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And I feel like if I... The only way I'm going to get him to play it is to actually physically sit him on the couch and be like, put the controller in his hand and turn it on and make him play it. Because once he starts it, I think he'll be into it. But it's just so much effort just to get him into it, so I, I still haven't done that. Um, but I, I also haven't played... I realize they've done three of their Dark Pictures Anthology games, uh, which I also have not played. Um, I actually checked PlayStation store to see, and they're all still full price $30, and I'm just like, eh, that's, like, $30 is a better price, but I feel like those might be a little shorter than a full length Until Dawn game, so then I'm like, mm, is it going to be worth $30? I don't know. I feel like $20, $15, $20 would be more in my range, or better yet, make them free with PlayStation Plus. Um, but, yeah. So The Quarry looked like a cool horror movie that I would enjoy streaming on Shudder, but um, it's a game, and I'm probably going to wait until it comes down in price a little. Which is fine, because it's coming out in, like, July or whatever, June or July or whatever, which is, like, really soon. Um, and I might, well, no, I'll probably be done with Horizon Forbidden West, because I've been playing it a lot. Um, I actually checked, and um, I, I'm closing in on, I'm, like, 57 hours in, closing in on 60 hours of gameplay so far, and according to their in-game stat counter, I'm only like 41% finished with the game. Um, now I will never 100% the game, because I'm not doing those nonsense races, because they're annoying. Um, and it broke the game with the slowdown, as you might recall from the previous episode. Uh, and then there's also like, okay, I am actually going to try, I've decided I'm going to try this Machine Strike game, which I'm hoping isn't as annoying as the strategy mini game that was in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I mean, I know people like these things, but I'm just like, no, I'd rather just go explore and climb cliffs and kill machines and rebels and whatever. I don't want to play a little strategy game in my game. Um, but I, I want to at least try it once, just to say I tried it. Um, but, like, I'm not going to do all that extra stuff to get 100%. So I don't know what completing the game and all the side quests and stuff is going to net me maybe, like, 90%. We'll see. Um... But it's it's great. I'm I'm still working my way through the main quest. Um, I pushed through the main quest because I kept running into these metal flowers that are like annoying and like you needed a special device to get through the vines to get the stuff that's behind there. And um, I finally was like, you know what? Forget it. Let me do the main quest. And then I this I just did the la the last main quest that I did got me the device I needed, so now I can open up all those metal flowers, and I'm just like, now I'm going to go back and do a bunch of random stuff again, but uh, I'm trying to hold off on the main quest now, I want to do a bunch of side stuff now. Then I'll go back to the main quest. Um, what I, I did want to mention that um, in exploring and doing side quests and meeting new people, um, I have encountered a couple of uh, vaguely homosexual characters. Uh, well, actually, one one was just vaguely, like, there's this one guy that you, like, help climb to the top of a mountain so that he can prove that he's worthy of being part of this Tanakh tribe. Um, and after you finish that quest, there's a guy who was really worried about him, and he's super grateful that he's back, and, like, he's like, oh, I'm so glad you're back, you know, uh, let me buy you a drink or something. And he goes off, and this guy's sister is like, dude, he's totally sweet on you, he's cute, he's cute. He's like, ah, And I was like, oh, that's like a little gay moment. Um, and then I just encountered another Tanakh who asked me to help kill some machines that were endangering his tribe. And afterwards, he admitted that he really misses this fellow 
Tanakh soldier that he used to work with, and Aloy's like, you were more than friends, weren't you? And he's like, yes, every time I think of him, my heart hurts. And it's like this weird, vaguely gay thing, and I'm just like, Ugh. Like, just do it, you know, show us, have, and also, like, let's have happy characters, not just the gay guy missing his gay lover, because he's dead. But I kind of appreciate it. Um, it's just nice to see. It would be nicer if, if they had more prominent roles or, you know, like, make, you know, Var, well, Varl's not gay because he's got crush on Zoe, but, you know, somebody could be an actual homosexual who has an actual relationship with a live person. That would be a nice change of pace, wouldn't it? Um, of course, it's bad enough to sell a game with a female protagonist, because apparently Ubisoft won't do that with Assassin's Creed. But thankfully, other game developers are not quite so misogynistic. Um, okay, so I have rambled on way too long, and I've got some more exploring to do in Horizon Forbidden West and side quests to wrap up so that I can get back to the main quest and uh, go to San Francisco. You'd think you'd meet gays in San Francisco, right? We'll see. I'll, I'll let you know. See you then. Bye!